What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football Tuesday. Probably my favorite day of the week. You can go with Tequila Tuesday. It'd be Titty Tuesday. In particular, is Don't Say the Cars Topless Tuesday. We are exposing one rookie every Tuesday that is going far, 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 far too low in our rookie drafts and our dynasty startup drafts. We're going in deep. Some of these players you ain't going to hear the names of. Some of them are just first round guys that should be going a little bit higher. Today's video in particular, we're diving into Florida statewide receiver. Florida State's Tamarian Terry. This dude is an absolute baller. He is a freak. Size, speed, athleticism. He's freaky enough. He makes you rethink your relationship with your girlfriend. Pause. I meant it sound a lot better when I thought about it. Y'all know what I mean. He's going too damn late. He's got too much upside. So I want to vent about it. Tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. If at any point y'all are enjoying the video, find some information you find valuable, whatever the case may be, do not hesitate to hit the thumbs up button. Do not hesitate to subscribe. I'm getting you ready for your rookie drafts, your dynasty drafts all off season. Let's talk about Tamari and Terry out of Florida State, redshirt junior, okay? So he redshirt as a freshman, went through his freshman season, his sophomore season, his junior season. He's coming out a little bit older than most players, right? He's going to be a little bit over 23 years old, so that is one thing working against him. He's got a lot working for him, though. As I said, he's a freak. 6'4", probably going to weigh in between 215 pounds and 220 pounds. 6'4", 215. Check out this tweet from my man Ray GQ, good friend of the show. Please let 6'4", 220 pounds, Tamari and Terry get the draft capital. 23.4 miles per hour in game speed in 2019 would have been the fastest time clocked in the NFL over the last four years. He has that legit 4-4 speed, which always fucking breaks the parameters of people on Twitter when you got a 6-4 guy, 220 guy running that 4-4 speed. I know we've had a lot of those size speed freaks come out over the previous few years or whatnot. Usually they don't work out, okay? The key does not fit the lock when you push it into the NFL, right? We've had the Rashad Perriman's, we've had the Kevin Whites, we've had the Miles Boinkins. And when you look at those guys individually, man, like Kevin White didn't do a single thing in college. He was a ju Juco guy, didn't do a single thing at a real reputable school at West Virginia until he was like over 23. So he had absolutely no breakout age. You look at Rashad Perriman, who was good at a little bit of a younger age, but he played at UCF. So he was not doing it in Power 5 Conference, which is another huge red flag. Look at a guy like Miles Boinkin. Miles Boinkin had a breakout age in the 18th percentile, okay? So here's the way I look at those types of players. If you're that good, if you're that big, you're that fast, you're six foot three, six foot four, 220 pounds, and you can't produce at a really high level in college, your breakout age is really, really old. If you can't be that much more imposing than everybody else on the field, and you can't do it until you're a senior, like you're two, three years older than everybody while having that physical skill set and you can't break out till then, that's obviously a huge red flag. When you look at Tamari and Terry, he went to Florida State, Power Five school, of course. His breakout age, a little bit older, okay? So you see 20 and a half. Since he redshirted, he did break out during his redshirt freshman year. He was still in the 51st percentile, okay? So you see that all the way in the bottom right, 51st percentile, 20 and a half breakout age. While it's a little bit old and he's going to be a little bit old, older of a prospect, I'm not really going to hold that against him considering what he can do on the field. Look at a guy like Chase Claypool, right? Look back at last year, six foot four, running a 4-4-2, 40-yard dash. The size speed specimen, now he's doing his thing in the NFL. I would expect very similar height, size, speed out of Tamari and Terry. His pro day is on March 29th. So we got about over the next month or so, I think pro days kind of start in March, usually midway through March towards the end of the month where we're going to be getting to see more of this athleticism on display and get 40 times and get burst and agility and those kind of scores. So over the next month, keep an eye on that. Again, Terry broke out during his redshirt freshman season, 2018. 2019 was the big, big year for him though. It's similar to Cam Akers, right? Cam Akers was in that offense as well. Flores say everybody talked about how bad that offense was. He broke out in 2019. So did Tamari and Terry. So those were the two guys where this offense completely centered around. They broke out despite terrible offensive line play, despite terrible quarterback play. They were able to get through that. If you look at Tamari and Terry, very strong frame, obviously NFL ready, no problem winning versus man coverage. He has a nasty, nasty double move on the outside. He is a, a master downfield. His biggest problem is probably just drops, concentration drops. Sometimes it feels like he's got brick for hands, which could be a problem at the next level if he's just not a good 
ball catcher in general but he does does so many things that bring his upside up to a point where a lot of wide receivers getting drafted around the same spot don't possess now you're gonna hear a lot of people wildly overstate his hip fluidity his wiggle his fucking lateral movement but fuck that noise for someone that's six foot four 215 pounds he moves fine like how many dudes in the nfl you got the kenny galladay's the mike evans that are his size move like tyree kill after the catch it's not their game he doesn't need to do that Although, when you look at some of the objective numbers, going back to 2019, his big season, and we're going to get into the 2020 season, he had a very, very down year. There's context behind it. When you look at his objective numbers, yards after the catch, 611 of his 1,187 yards, so 51.4% in that big season, came after the catch. Okay, that was all yak. 611 of his receiving yards were yak. That yak number was 13th in the NCAA, despite ranking 78th in receptions with 60. His broken tackle rate on his receptions, 10%, which was in the upper third percentile. So in the top 33% of players in terms of broken tackle rate on reception, he is fine with the ball in his hands after the catch. So again, Terry was great in 2019, 60 catches, 1,188 yards, nine touchdowns. Going to hit you with an insane stat per the draft network. Tamari and Terry averaged 58 yards per reception on his nine touchdowns in 2019. He averaged 58 yards per reception on his nine touchdowns in 2019. That's fucking absurd people are immediately going to go back you know this is what we do it's all recency bias we're going to look back at 2020 and wonder what the fuck happened in the box score right he came out of this 2019 season you're looking at a guy who's 6'4 215 putting up monster numbers in a terrible offense and he was a borderline first round projected nfl pick he comes back in 2020 the season is weird he's gonna opt out he ends up playing he ends up opting out after six games six games played 23 catches 289 yards 12.6 yards per reception and a touchdown so you look at the numbers freshman year sophomore year the yardage the receptions the yards per reception 21.3 in his freshman year 19.8 his sophomore year everything dips down in 2020 what happens he all of a sudden just gets bad his size doesn't matter his speed doesn't matter he's just a terrible wide receiver here's what happened he was playing on a terrible knee a really bad knee i know everyone says everyone's hurt everyone's playing on a bad knee everyone's playing on a bummed ankle already already but here's a difference maker after the first four games of this year he needed to get a procedure done on his knee he was in enough pain through the first four games that he actually had to go under the knife to get his knee cleaned up chopped up salt bait up i wonder if like doctors ever do that shit you think doctors got like signature moves after they finish a surgery the fact that he started to play the games needed the procedure should tell you that he was in a significant amount of pain leading up to that spot through the first four games his very modest numbers right 5.2 reception 69 yards he scored once he had the surgery came back immediately afterwards put up an absolute donut literally zero for zero and then a 214 game after that and he was done for the season he opted out he said listen i'm not playing on a bum knee these stats are fucking up my draft profile and i'm done here i'm getting ready for the nfl draft the per game numbers in 2020 I, you see what he did freshman year you see what he did sophomore year and then 2020 comes he has the knee surgery halfway through the year and then eventually opts out to get ready for the nfl draft the offense was also just terrible the adjusted completion percentage of the fsu quarterbacks in 2020 ranked 110th out of 140 qualified quarterback so even if he wanted to play through even if he was healthy the quarterback play is not helping him. after the 2019 year i am very much willing to wipe 2020 clean from his slate and look back at to his most productive season because if he had the surgery in week four that means it was significantly bothering him for the three four games he played up until the surgery and when you push to come back onto the field immediately afterwards of course you're going to be less than 100 percent, which should probably explain away the two dud games he had afterwards so his per game numbers 2020 completely explained away by the knee procedure his coach was coming there, there are quotes that his coach came out and said he barely practiced he had to be limited throughout practice and for most of the first month of the games when i look at tamari and terry overall just the size the frame the production in college the breakout age is not great but it's not 21 it's not 22 years old he's going to be a little bit of an older prospect but these are the things that you get to draft him at a valued price for right these are the red flags in him but i think he's got as much upside as anyone in this part of the rookie drafts right according to the 20 rookie mock drafts that we ran during bdge mock week last week or earlier this month terry is currently going off the board at the 306 wide receiver 13 and super flex rookie drafts so smack dab in the middle of the third round behind guys like Kadarius tony behind trey sermons behind brevin jordans behind seth williams all guys that i would take tomorrow and terry over i have him ranked 22nd overall okay so the 210 that's a full eight spots higher than our rookie bdge adp currently hasn't pegged in for so i think he's a fantastic value in the middle of the third round i think he's someone that should be going in the late second at worst the early early parts of the third round size speed downfield playmaking ability the yak i think he's really really got fantastic upside that people are going to pigeonhole him into this big receiver that can't move well we don't like his fucking hip fluid you can take your hip fluid and shove it up your fucking hip hole bitch all right that's all we got for don't say the car's topless tuesday 
We say the titties is out. Today was Tamari and Terry. Wow, a lot of T's being thrown around. Don't say the car's topless. Tamari and Terry, titty Tuesday. Say the titties is out. We're out. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be doing a deep dive on one rookie player that I think is undervalued every single Tuesday. See y'all next time. Let's get it all in perspective For all y'all enjoyment A song y'all can step with Y'all appointed me to bring rap justice But I ain't 5-0 Y'all know it's not